calculator. A couple of things that I wanted to review on 144. When we're, and the book doesn't do a very good job at making a distinction between them, but you always have to keep in mind whatever probability we're talking about, that it could be theoretical as to like what should be happening, or it could be experimental, and then it's based on what actually happened, right? So often an experimental will have some sort of a chart or it will have some sort of like, this is what, what the results are of the poll or anything like that. Then you should be thinking, okay, this is based on what actually happened, right? And then sometimes they'll mix it up. They'll ask you, hey, what's, what is it in theory and what is it in, as an experiment? So you're probably wondering like what's happening here, right? Let me give you a just, a brief example you don't need to write this down because you will see this but let's say you're flipping a coin you have heads and tails right and you get a chart like this and you're let's say you're flipping it you know a hundred times you're doing this experiment and you're flipping a hundred times and you're recording your results at the end of the day you get 60 60 times it landed on heads and 40 times it landed on tails. That's an experiment you just perform. Uh, let me ask you, in theory, the theoretical probability, yeah, um, so, Theoretical probability of the coin landing on heads, okay? What would that be? 50-50, one out of two, right? Everybody should know, right? Probability of heads is one out of two or 50%. That's a fact, right? Like that's like the most basic example I can give you. But what if the question said, what's the experimental experimental probability of the coin landing on heads you would have to yeah you would have to always if they don't give you the total if this isn't there you add up right so 60 occurrences out of 60 plus 40 is 100 i i picked numbers that are easy to right just to so this is the experimental probability and what is 60 divided by 100 it's 60 percent right that's 60%. And you might wonder, it's like, wait a minute, why are they different? Didn't you just tell me that in theory, it's supposed to be one, one and two times supposed to land on heads? Why is it 60%? And the answer should always be, you haven't performed enough experiments. If you were to probably toss it a thousand times or maybe 1500 times, this answer, the 50% should get, the experimental probability should be get closer and closer to the 50% because that's just unless the coin is rigged or has if you're making it a little heavier on one side than on the other then obviously there's a bias there but other than that if the coin is the same it should land um, half and half okay so that's the difference between theoretical and ex experimental in, in a sense right so that's what's happening uh, so again, from time to time, you're going to see that appear, right? So small sample size, they're not the same usually, but a large sample size, like increasing the number of trials, will make the two be very close. Usually not exactly the same, but very close, right? Um, and I also want you to remember that probability in favor of something plus probably against that same event, so rain and not raining, right? It's always going to be one or a hundred percent and so forth. You need to remember that. Okay. So we are going to continue. We're going to remember that on 146, let's go to 146 real quick. This should be on your study sheet, perhaps. Um, 146 at the bottom, if you're making a prediction, so it's not always going to say predict. It's going to say, how many would you expect, right? Based on the probability, you know, how many would you expect to land on tails? How many would you expect? Okay. How many would you expect to land on blue or something like that, right? So 
that is a very important formula for you to have, okay? So P of event is probability. You need some sort of probability, okay? Um, I will say this, if given a choice, you should always use the theoretical probability to make a prediction. Don't use the experimental, use the theoretical if given a choice. Sometimes you don't have a choice, you have to go by what you have, um, but I would say keep that in mind. Okay, so then we did, uh, we did a few questions here, right, probability of red, probability all of that. And we made some predictions, right, on a bag with a thousand candies, how many would be red, okay? Uh, it said red, so I should have added here, right, for C, uh, we're expecting 300 candies in a bag of a thousand to be red, okay? And we based it on our probability on the smaller scale, and we projected it over. Now... Is it possible that a bag has 350 candies that are red? Absolutely. We're just making a prediction what is likely to happen, right? You can never know for sure 100%, right? So um, that's that. I would like to add <clears throat> one example here at the bottom of this page. So this is on 147. Go to 147. And at the bottom, because this doesn't... They don't have a whole lot of examples, but I will throw this at you quite often. State the probability of the candy not being green or, or not being green. That's a weird question, right? But but state the probability of something not being green. Emphasis on the not. Okay? Emphasis on the not here. And you will see my answer key quite often saying probability. I will actually write down green and just put a line on top of it like that. That is telling you that I want to know what the chances are of not getting a green in this case. Now, remember probability is always out of a total. And I already determined beforehand by adding up all the different candies, right, that we had 50 candies in total. And how many are not going to be green? And this is what I do. I take the 50, I take all of them, and I'm going to subtract what? I'm going to subtract the number of green candies that are in the bag. So I'm going to go back up here and just review, right? We had 10 that were green. So out of the 50, I'm going to take the 10 away, and then I have the ones that are not green. Okay? So that gives me 40 out of 50. You, technically, if I don't ask you to simplify, you're done there. No need to do anything else. Uh, but you can cancel the zeros, right? You can divide them both by 10. So you get 4 out of 5. That's your reduced answer, simplified. Decimal, 4 divided by 5, or 40 divided by 5, you get 0 0.8 or 80%. So you got to be kept comfortable going from one to the other. Simplifying, don't worry about it too much. You will be fine if you don't simplify, um, but it will cost you a few half marks here and there uh, if I ask you to simplify. So this is, it, it, this is again, not being green, okay? Not being green. So I took away the green from that, right? So. Maybe I will put an arrow to the 10 and just say that those are the green green candies. That's the fastest way of doing it. Of course, you could have just added up all the other ones except for the greens and still come up with 40, right? So it's just whatever is available to you, use it. 
right? Be, be smart about it um, and, and you'll be fine. Okay. Show me work. Quite often students just do this. They just show up that final answer and if it's wrong, I've got nothing. If you have this set up like this and you're showing me what you did and then you make a small mistake, you didn't subtract properly or something, at least you're showing evidence of you, you understanding it, okay? All right, let's keep going. Ready? And I will ask you to write this down at the top of 148. There's a bit of space there. And I already uh, went ahead and made up this question. So make sure you leave a little bit of room between A and B, okay? It's not going to be a whole lot that we need. I'll just read it once. A food truck offers four menu items. You have hot dog, burger, chicken fingers, and onion rings. You've got four options. And here are the actual sales. So this food truck owner recorded the number of sales of each category, right? So make sure you have that. If you can make that smaller, that would be great. I just wanted to make sure you could read it when you copy it. Here are the actual sales. You can shorten it if you just want to go H is 45, B is 65, right? Like just shorten it as much as you can. And then it says, what's the experimental probability of someone buying chicken fingers? What's the theoretical probability of somebody buying chicken fingers? So I will highlight those two, okay? This is, to me, that's why I made this question to make the distinction between the two. Right? So take some time, write it down. Let's get this going here. So when, you, when you're asked to find the experimental probability, it's based on what actually occurred. Okay, so you need to figure out, I will actually write this down, the experimental probability of fingers Okay, EPM, just, just to make sure that you understand that's an experimental probability. I need to figure out how many do I have in total. Anybody add that up already? 200, it should have been 200. What's that? 220? Oh, I'm going to double check here because I don't trust. Yeah, it's 220. Where did I get the 220 from? I just added up the number of sales. And then I need to go and find out how many of those sales were actually chicken fingers, 70, okay? Um, let's leave it there and just turn it into a decimal. 70 divided by 220, that would be 0 0.31. And I told you that we will uh, state it to four decimals, right? So. That's where it ends with a 1, so the 8 turns that into a 2. Then you multiply that by 100, and you state it as a percentage, 31.82%. So you should be able to do this uh, answer in three different ways, right? I, I encourage you to do that because sometimes one is more beneficial than the other. Okay? Um, then it says, what's the theoretical probability of somebody buying chicken fingers? In theory, let's go TP uh, fingers. What would you do here? You go back to the heads and tails example. How many options do you have? Four options. And only one of them, only one of them is chicken fingers, right? So in theory, one and four, and you should know that this is 0 0.25, and you should also know that this is 25%. Okay. And so there's a discrepancy there. But in this case, do you think that selling more, making more sales would bring these closer together? Do you think that would happen in this particular instance? Can you dictate... Like, 
preferences of food items, you can't. So in this particular instance, that would not. With anything, any games, like card games, dice, anything like that, yes, more, more experiments will get them closer together. But when it comes to this or blood type or anything like that, you can't. Like there's certain... There's certain predispositions, there's certain things that make it be the way it is. You can't, you can't predict, like if there's three candidates running for president, you can't say, oh, just get more voters and then you'll get them closer to 33%. You can't do that, right? There will be one that is favored over the others, right? And so keep that in mind, okay? Let's keep going. And I want you to add... Um, I'm not gonna show you every, just this part here. Let's read it. That's the most important thing in this unit. If you read it first and then maybe read it again before you answer, okay? A grocery store sells three brands of toothpaste. Last month, the, sold store, uh, the store sold 75 tubes, right? There's 75 tubes of brand A, 23 of brand B, and 57 tubes of brand C. So they're giving you the totals for each brand. Okay, please add this because the book doesn't do it. This is based on what actually happened. So it should have read, what is the experimental probability of a customer buying a tube of brand A? Express your answer as a simplified fraction. We're not necessarily going to do that. We're going to answer it in three formats. That's what I'm going to do. But keep this in mind. Listen carefully. Because this is not, it's not too bad if you just follow. If I say what's the probability, you're just going to assume that we're going to base our answer on what actually occurred. Okay? You, you don't have another option, right? So if I don't make a distinction, just go by what actually happened here. Okay? So uh, we want brand A, right? What's the probability of brand A? So probability of brand A. will be, well, there's 75 tubes that I know were brand A, and I need to get my total here. So I'm going to go get the total up here. I'm just going to quickly add it up. 75 plus 23 plus 57. What is it? 150? Uh, that sounds about right. I'm going to check here. 155, right? 155. You could divide them both by five, right? But we're not going to do it. We're just going to state the decimal. That's what I need you to be able to do. 75 divided by 155. I, I don't go equal because we're rounding. So zero point, watch this, my calculator, 483, nine. Because the seven bumps that up to a nine. So you count four decimal places, go look at the fifth one, and that will tell you what to write down for sure. Then multiply that by 100. That gives you 48, 39%. Okay? You can do this, guys. It's, it's very doable. So almost a 50% chance of selling tube A so far. If, store, uh, if the store sells 500 tubes right next month, you're selling 500 tubes next month. So you're going to make a prediction, right? You're making a prediction. Okay. How many tubes of brand B, right, can you expect to sell? They're, like, it's just filled with, like, you're making a prediction, right? It's just filled with words. So you're making a prediction. You should, you should be able to tell, oh, okay, I, I know where this is going. This is not just a one answer thing. I'm going to have to do a little bit of work here. And you know, you will be able to tell that this is out of two marks. If I ever do this to you, you you'll see a two mark at the end. So let's go prediction. Is going to be probability of brand B times large sample. Okay, you're going to make that prediction onto that larger sample. And you're probably wondering, what did he write down? What's this question that Mr. Gregson added there? Don't worry about it just yet, okay? Just focus on that part. Okay. 
probability of brand B. Go up there and look at how many tubes were of brand B. You had 23, right? And it's still out of 155. I like to put that in brackets. That's like the probability of getting brand B. Then you're going to portray this onto the larger sample, which in this case we're talking 500 tubes that are going to be sold next month. I need to see this work like that. And then you just go, in this case, it's okay to do the train thing, equal and equal. The choo-choo train, right? It's not cool anymore. With grade nines, I was okay to say, right? We're grade 12. Okay. So I, I divide this first. That's how I do it. And multiply it by 500. And you get 74.19. And that keeps going. Don't, don't do anything yet. So we're talking uh, tubes, right? So you go approximately... I will round to 74 tubes. Based on what happened here, I'm expecting 74 tubes. Why wouldn't I say 75? Because you're not quite selling enough to make it 75, so to be on the safer side. But if you rounded it to 75, I would be okay with that because uh, I don't want a decimal answer, okay? All right, write this part down here, C. What is the theoretical probability of a customer buying a tube of brand C? I'm gonna zoom in because my writing is a little sketchy on that one. Okay, what's the theoretical probability of a customer buying a tube of brand C. Probability of brand C. How many brands are there? It's in theory. In theory, it's just like, think of the coin example. There's two options, right? So we have three brands and only one of them is brand C, right? So this would be 0.3333 or 33.33%. The question doesn't say, like there's so many assumptions that we're making here. The first assumption is that we're thinking that all three brands, right, they're about the same. So you're just literally just going up and you're just grabbing one randomly, right? So there's nothing that one is, has more than the other. They all cost the same thing. All of that is assumed when you do one of these here. Just randomly selecting one, right? Okay. Let's move on. I will do one more example and then I'll I'll get you to do uh, questions on your own. Okay. Before before we're gonna do more theoretical after, which includes a deck of cards and all of that stuff. So if you're into card games, you'll be fine. If not, I'll have to teach you a few things. Okay. All right. Actually, um, let's see here. Let's read it first. The table below shows the number of people of each blood type who donated blood at a recent drive. Okay, so you've got your blood type and you've got the number of donors for each blood type. It's probability. So we're going to need our, our total. So let's, let's add all of these up. And right next to this thing here, we're going to come up with our total here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to state my total right here because if they're going to ask me the probability of each blood type, of having each blood type, we need our total. So let's add that up and see what we get. You should double check. Just to make sure. 
I get the eight fifty total, right? Eight hundred fifty people are considered now. So this would definitely be if I asked you what kind of probability are we talking here? It's experimental, right? This is what based on what we've collected. You've collected data, and that's what you're making your your uh, predictions based on that. Okay. So what probability, what's the probability uh, that a person selected at random has the following blood type? So probability of B plus, okay. we know it's going to be out of 850. And we know that, how many are B plus? We've got 77 uh, donors that would qualify there. Let's state that as a decimal underneath. So I encourage you to do this um, right now on your own. If, if you were to, if I were to give you this and you would not want to lose a single mark here, would you be able to do this rounding and everything? So I divide them and I get 0 0.0900. That's where it ends and the 8 bumps that to a 6. Anything five, if there's a five and up next to it, you bump it up. Okay? So it's 0 0.9. And then I multiply that by 100 as it's on my calculator. And I say that this is 9.06%. So all three, you should be able to do all three. Never mind simplifying. I'm not asking you to simplify. It's going to be very, very uh, rare. Okay? Here and there, I'll ask you to simplify. So if you want that half a mark, then that's where that comes in, okay? So we're done with that. Um, probability, this one is tricky. I, I want to see if you get this part. It's just a little trickier, okay? What's the probability of having blood type O? And you look up here, there's O positive. And then there is O negative. So this question is actually saying, right, either one of them will do. So either one of them is considered. So you basically go O positive, 327. Or remember in math, especially in probability, or is plus, right? You're adding plus 69. Okay? So you're adding both of these blood types and I will make a little note here that this is O, right? Both of them combined would just be the O type. And then you add it up and you get 327, 69, that's not 396. So you go 396 over 850 would be the correct answer there. I'm going to go 396 divided by 850. And I'll do it next because I don't have a whole lot of room. That's 4659. And multiply that by 100 on my calculator. And I get 46.59%. So all three answers are there. I definitely expect you to do that. I will sometimes say state in all three forms. Okay. AB negative. It's still out of 850. We've determined that already right at the beginning. AB negative, you only have one donor here. So it doesn't, it, it's, it's a rare blood type, right? So it's harder to get that. So here we go, one divided by 850. And this is a small 0.00. .00 one right one two three sorry one two sorry i missed one right times 100 watch this it's it's a very small one two percent right so it's i don't know why the equal sign is there you can get rid of that right so this comma this and comma that so it's a very small chance of someone having that blood type 
be comfortable with this. Charts are, I, I, I will put quite a few charts up on, on worksheets and ACs and like, like that. So just, you need to get your total out of that and then just grab the numbers and plug them in. Question, question of the day. What's the probability of someone not having AB negative? I don't have room for that here. Someone not having AB negative. It would be 849 out of 850. Got it? Because if one out of 850 have AB negative, then 849 out of 850 do not have AB negative. Okay, so you gotta understand that. I might, I ask quite frequently, what's the probability of not getting something, right? So you just gotta understand that that's how that works. Okay, B, if data approximately represents the blood type distribution of the general population. So you're, they're saying, if this is kind of representative of all of Canada in general, if that were the case, how many people in a group of 5,000 are likely to have AB positive? So what are we, what is it asking us there to make a prediction, okay? Make a prediction. So prediction, I will just show one line as probability of AB positive, right? I take that probability and I will multiply it by larger sample. I think your formula that I gave you just says sample. I think it's better to look at it as the larger sample, right? Like you made it, you made some probabilities out of the 850. Now you're portraying it onto a larger sample. So AB positive, we haven't done that yet. So you have to do that from scratch. So we're still talking about the 850 that we started with. AB positive, you have 27. Okay. So it's 27 out of 850 is the probability. And then you multiply that by the 5,000 people that you're expecting to donate down the road in the future. So 27 divided by 850 times 5,000. That is 158.82 and that keeps going which is approximately, if you had to report on this, well, you would probably say on the safe side, 158 people. Right? I would go round down to be on the safe side. Okay? Even though you probably learned, oh, it's, there's an eight, so that but rounds to 159. I would be okay with that. I would not take marks off if you did that but just don't have a decimal answer. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop there for a bit, um, but I'm going to add a few things. So follow, follow along here. I'm going to tell you what to work on. So circle the ones I want you to work on now. So you circle five. And this question bleeds into the next page, so don't, don't miss that. There's a C on the back side. And then I want you to skip a few questions. Go to 151. 151, at the bottom of 151, you start seeing this. You should recognize that from yesterday. I, I know that, I can tell you that the AC coming up has one of these in it, okay? So if you know how to do that, you're good for tomorrow, okay? Keep going. I want you to do basically two, three, four, five and six. <laughs> you're like, seriously? Yes, I want you to do all of those that you just circled. So, okay, basically page 151 to 153, if you want to have a quicker way of re referring to it. Make sure you do this. Put that phone away if it's distracting you. Take your calculator out. 
and then just go through these. And uh, don't ask me too many questions. Try to just fend for yourselves. And then I will go over it, okay? I promise I will go over it and I will correct it if you have any complaints. Yeah. You will also get your test back. And you know what? Uh, I might do that as you're working. I will just hand them back. If you have no questions about it, I will take them back as I do uh, now. And, um, and then uh, you should have received a report already at this point. So that's what's going on your report card. Just so you know.